The Goat House is back, ranking the top 30 NFL rookies so far this season. We are in that back half of the season approaching week 12, and that number one spot is a lot tighter, a lot closer than it was maybe a couple weeks ago. Let's take a look at the top 30 guys so far this season. Coming in at number 30 is going to be the Packers rookie safety from Oregon, Evan Williams. He had a couple really flashy games. Now we're going to see if he can put more of those games together, but he's kind of taken over as the starter. He has some limited snaps, I guess, compared to some other guys in this list, so maybe that's keeping him down. But as he continues to go forward and, and log more snaps, maybe he can continue to climb. We'll see if, if we have more of those super flashy games that he had. Nate Wiggins comes in at number 29, the Ravens' first-round rookie corner from Clemson. The past defense of the Ravens has been questionable, but he's been really solid and getting better and better, so he's another guy that can continue to climb. Another corner, Mikey Sainer still who could play inside and out, been really physical out there for the Commanders, and a guy that's really helped this Commanders defense step up you know, compared to the early week, so he's at 28. Taliese Fuaga, the Saints' first-round rookie, out of Oregon State, their offensive tackle. Been a little hot and cold. You know, one one week he looks like a top 10 rookie, you know, like an elite rookie, if you will. And then there's some weeks where the whole offensive line is a little off. They did have some injuries to the unit, so that kind of affects everybody. But he comes in at 27. He just had a really good game in week 11. Tyke Smith, the Buccaneers defensive back, obviously a safety, but plays a lot in the slot box area. Does a lot of you know different things. You know, maybe another Antoine Winfield. Not quite in the back end the way he plays back there, but a guy that is almost like a Swiss Army knife type of defensive back in terms of making plays all over the field. So the Buccaneers DB comes in at number 26. 25, another defensive back. The Chargers corner from Notre Dame. Cam Hart didn't start the year, but took over because of injuries to the cornerback position for the Chargers, and he's looked Really good. It's actually looked like their best corner when in the game. You know, locked down, tight in coverage. And we saw that at Notre Dame, too. I was surprised that he slipped through, you know, down the draft a little bit. But they got a good one there in Cam Hart. Edrin Cooper, the Packers linebacker. Another kind of Swiss Army Knife type player where he's a linebacker, but he also can blitz. He can rush off the edge if you want him to as well. We saw that at Texas A&M. Why thought, some thought he could be a first-round pick. Packers get him in the second. And he obviously looks legit for them right now. A lot of good rookies here. Ty Tyrone Tracy has taken over as that starting running back for the New York Giants. I would imagine he is one that will continue to climb. I got Bucky Irving at 22, the Buccaneers rookie running back from Oregon. But I think I would predict that Tracy continues to climb or Irving is more splitting. And Tracy has recently, somewhat recently, he's kind of been getting going for a bit, taken over uh, as the Giants lead back over Devin Singletary. Uh, you know, if he didn't end that Panthers game, they had a bye this past week, the week before against the Panthers with, with a fumble, maybe he'd be a little bit higher if he could help them win that game. He had some production in that game. but So two running backs in a row right there, 23 and 22. I will say someone that didn't make the list, Ray Davis of the Bills, I love what I see from him. He just has super limited uh, reps, I suppose, just because the other running backs like James Cook, they have. Brandon Coleman at 21. Yeah, tricky one to rank because he does have some limited snaps as well compared to some other guys on this list, but he's looked so good and has taken over as that guy and arguably a top one or two guy on that offense line for the Commanders. Look like they really got one in the TCU offense lineman. Some thought he'd be better as a guard, and then the big concern for most, I mean, I saw it on tape as well, was his hand placement was very, very high, and that was going to be an issue for, you know, pass rushers that know how to get a little lower, but he's really fixed that, and it is, it makes sense. It's kind of something you can fix, so he's been extremely impressive and one for the future for that commander's offense line to protect Jaden Daniels. Number 20, the Texans rookie safety from USC, Kalen Bullock, who is a big-time playmaker in the back end, obviously can jump routes, get his hands in the ball, and he was a big-time prospect at USC, and then that big-time prospect label kind of went away. People worry about his physicality, his tackling, but he's been very, very solid, at least in coverage for Houston. He didn't start to start the air, even though he was making an impact, but really has taken over for them. Andrew Phillips, the Giants corner, he missed some, some reps there earlier in the year, didn't start week one, then he was getting going, playing well, and then he was out early in a game and then missed the next game as well. So that's kind of bringing him down the list a little bit, but when he's been on the field, he's played very well. As advertised at Kentucky, really good covering underneath, really physical you know, high energy, high motor type guy. Dominic Pooney, the 49ers guard coming in at 18. 
Artie could argue is one of the better, you know, interior play, probably is the best interior player on that offense line for the 49ers. He is at 18, 17. Another Texans corner, Kamari Laster, which looks like a steal for them. Another physical corner that gets his hands on the ball. Probably would have been higher. He just missed a game in week 11 for them. But a lot of guys, I mean, there's so many good rookies, as you could tell. I mean, there's good guys that did not make this list, and there's good guys, you know, in the teens here, obviously. And then Zach Frazier, who missed a little bit of time for them as well, which kind of bumped them down, but a very efficient, very consistent, I should say, center for the Steelers. Offensive line looking much better this year for them. Um, you know, so he's doing really, really solid things. For the Steelers on that offensive line, he comes in at number 16. Number 15, Cooper DeGene of the Eagles. Obviously can play inside and outside corner for them. Really could, I, I believe that he can line up anywhere in a punt returner as well. But he you know, didn't play a whole lot to start the year, but then really took over. And he looked damn good. You know, So I guess a limited sample size for him. Somewhat limited, but he's been really getting going lately. But in those games, he has looked awesome you know so just log more snaps the last game against the commanders could have been a little bit better compared to the other games but still very solid he's at 15 titans nose tackle devondre sweat from texas looks like a steal as well and a dominant dominant run stuffer already and knows how to kind of open things up for other teammates as he can take on double teams he's been fantastic 13 marvin harrison jr the cardinals rookie receiver obviously star prospect from ohio state He's a tough one to rank because he's been super flashy, especially in the red zone. He has some production, has some yardage, obviously, as well. He's kind of been hot and cold, too. I mean, I'm not going to put too much weight on week one, but started slow in week one. Then he's had some random games pop up where not only does he disappear, but maybe some drops here and there, like the Chargers game was somewhat recently. But uh, the Cardinals have been rolling, and he's been getting better and better. So I, another guy that they could, could climb. And Brayden Fisk gets a big boost after this past week. He actually leads rookies in sacks so that's big time for him a lot of good production uh, from the interior there so the Rams get one with that Florida State defensive tackle he is at number 12 Drake May is climbing up the boards because obviously he didn't start to start the year but since he's been in you've seen some mistakes but you see him get better and better yeah perfect world if he can close out games take care of the ball a little bit better he would not only be top 10 he would be easily you know far into the top 10 because he is a special talent making special plays Plays that you either have or you don't. It's not something you develop, you know, with just more reps. It's not one of those situations. But his clutch ability on third down and to be able to make the, these wild throws under pressure on the run, tight window, the velocity behind the ball. J again, just things you can't really coach. And we've seen him. We've seen those things pop up. We're starting to see him pop up more and more. I thought he played his best game yet as a rookie against the Rams so And then really clutch with his legs, too, which we saw at North Carolina on third down, like a smart runner, knowing when to go. He needs to be a little smart with sliding, though, but he's a guy that you could definitely argue has the highest upside in this class, and I would imagine he can continue to climb. Perfect world. Take care of the ball a little bit. We expected him to have some kind of hero ball turnovers. It's fine, but take care of the ball a little bit better, close out some games, and then we could be talking about him in the top five. So he comes in just outside that top 10 at 11. On to the top 10, number 10, the Titans offensive tackle, J.C. Latham. A lot of people have doubted him because he was more of your old school tackle because he's really big, really built, and not the quickest guy in the world. But I think for his size, I think plenty quick enough, and he's been outstanding for them in the run game and in terms of pass protection. The, the rest of the offensive line is a little questionable. J.C. Latham is the strongest person, the strongest part of that offensive line, so extremely impressed with him, a guy that I was very high on. Number nine, Lad McConkey rising back up after a monstrous game against the Bengals. It's a guy that can play in the slot and outside. I think he really dominates from the slot, but he knows how to find open spots and zones. He knows how to run routes, get open. He's pretty tough after the catch as well. He's been really starting to heat up, but at the same time, he's been productive right away. He's been their best receiver. Back-to-back uh, -back Chargers. Joe Alt comes in at number eight. Been out, obviously very, very solid for them. Uh, yeah, the only thing when he played some elite pass rushers, which makes some sense. He is he's a rookie and he hasn't been playing the position for super long. Looking at his career coming into Notre Dame, uh, but yeah, the elite pass rushers kind of gave him a battle, obviously. But for the most part, he's had some dominant, dominant games, especially run blocking, where the Chargers been very good. But now they're starting to heat up throwing the ball. Number seven, Malik Neighbors started the year off number one, like right in the beginning of the year, and we thought. At, it was way too early, but at that point, it was like, this guy's going to run away. The whole year, he's going to be number one. It's going to be clear cut. And that obviously changed a little bit for multiple reasons. Other guys being them, what they've done, and climbing up. 
Uh, then neighbors being out for a couple of weeks, and then Daniel Jones really struggling. So the, this upcoming week will be the first week that Tommy DeVito is the starting quarterback. So will that get him going? Will it be worse? We're playing against a Buccaneers weak secondary, so, so neighbors should be able to help himself this week. But And he's had some... Some drops in some, yeah, honestly, some big situations, so that plays a part as well, but still a dynamic, do-it-all type receiver that has elite in his future. He comes in at seven. Brian Thomas Jr., we talked about neighbors being one for the early portion of the season. Brian Thomas Jr. kind of took over for me, and he's been awesome. I think he's kind of got hurt about with Lawrence out, even though he did have, you know, like 82 or so yards this last week against the Lions, you know, a little later in the game, but... Yeah, I think Lawrence being out could, the rest of the year could hurt him. Or for for now, they actually didn't determine if it would be the rest of the year, but it could hurt him a little bit. Uh, but Ben looking like a polished receiver, like right from week one with his route running and just even though we knew he was something special, we thought it'd be a little bit raw. Not at all. He's again feels like a polished type receiver. And he's been hanging around that top spot, but some other guys recently playing that much that that well where they hopped up into the top five and jumped him but you see the LSU receivers showing out like they usually do number five a big time riser Bo Nix the Broncos rookie quarterback from Oregon a lot of doubts on him especially early in the year where he was really struggling you know a lot of just small ball offense is really all he can do and then he had some turnover at least turnover worthy throws but then he started to pick it up you know, one offensive rookie of the month, but I even think, and that was recently, but I even think, I even think right after that point, he's been playing even better. I mean, the last two games, and there's more good games than that, obviously, otherwise he wouldn't be on the list because you need more than just one, two, three, four games. But the Chiefs game, perfect world. You wish he finished it a little bit better in the second half. They got a little conservative, but for most of that game, he was outstanding against a really good defense. And then last week, this most recent week against the Falcons, he crushed the Falcons. I know the Falcons aren't the best defense in the world, but that's a talented team. And he went out there and dominated them. You know, just that game alone just looked like he it showed signs that he is making strides. And he has other good games. So don't get me wrong here. But just the offense looked so smooth and everybody looked better. Everybody looked better on that team from top to bottom these most recent weeks and it's because their quarterback if the quarterback plays better everyone plays better just looks so smooth I love his ability to understand when he's about to be pressure when it's time to hey I got to get outside the pocket to be able to make plays with his legs throwing and running but yeah throwing on the run has been what's really stood out with Bo Nix and becoming more and more accurate so he is a big time riser over the last several weeks but then after the Chiefs game, big riser. After the Falcons game, massive riser. So he is in the top five and looking like uh, 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 the Broncos' future and the franchise quarterback. Number four, the Raiders rookie tight end from Georgia, Brock Bowers, who we knew was kind of a sure thing to be a, a big-time football player, but he is getting started early and often here. Been fantastic for them. Had uh, some big plays against the Dolphins as well this most recent week in Week 11, but... Every single week he makes plays. Every single week. And he's starting to rack up some touchdowns on top of the production because he had the production, the, the yardage right away. So really getting going. He's a guy that you can scheme things up for, but he's he's a mismatch guy as well. You, you have to game plan for him. You have to account for him. And it opens things up for everyone else as well. So he's just he's more than just a ball player, right? So he is in to the top four heading into week 12. Number three, a serious candidate for defensive rookie of the year, the Rams rookie edge rusher from Florida State, first round pick, Jared Verse. And he's been good since week one. He's had some production. He's winning reps off the line, usually with force, with power, with the explosive get off. But again, he's been good since week one. But I'd say the last not just couple, several weeks, he has shown signs that he is getting better. It's significantly better, actually. Even though he was winning reps earlier in the weeks and he got some production, you know, perfect world, I wanted him to finish plays. At one point, he was actually leading the NFL in missed tackles and, and for a portion leading edge rushers missed tackles, which isn't great for an edge rusher, obviously, but he was winning reps and showing signs of, you know, so much upside. But so I noticed those things, but then as, after we got through like the first four, five, six weeks, he took it up another level. He is winning reps. He are still winning reps and finishing 
plays, finishing sacks, finishing tackles, night and day difference. Some people aren't noticing that. Some people think he's been you know, doing the same thing from the beginning, but I, I'm noticing major improvements, and he was already solid, very solid right from the start. So that is a great sign from him, been balling for the Rams, and the Rams defense starting to pick it up. Starts with these rookies. They know how to find them. They know how to draft them for sure, and he's looking legit. He's been hanging around the top two. Another defensive rookie just passed him for me. And every single week on Twitter, I post my top 10 rookies. So stay tuned for that. Follow us on Twitter. But somebody just passed him based off this week, how, how well they played. But verse a serious contender for that top rookie as it's starting to get a lot closer. It, number one was a sure thing, but it's starting to get a lot closer right now versus at number three as of right now. Number two, the Eagles rookie corner, Quinion Mitchell, continues to rise up these ranks and bumped up to number two from three for me this week and again we have update rankings on twitter decided to make a video this week as we are through a good portion of the season but mitchell has been outstanding the most recent game locking down the commanders and notably terry mclaurin of course they're not in man coverage every single play so it's not like he played specifically man up on mclaurin every single play but a lot of the time he was on him whether it's man or zone and locked the commander's receivers up and that's what he's been doing you notice the eagles defense from the end of last year to right now i mean an absurd rare never see this type of difference it, it's that much of a difference and it's not just one guy and the coach is a big thing of Vic fangio but you look at the the biggest difference i think it's coverage if we're looking specifically i think it's i i, I really believe it's coverage and there's a couple new guys and it's led you know DeGene DeGene is one that's taken off but mitchell is where it starts a lockdown corner that can play man and zone off the outside what i love about about mitchell is is physicality too like he is physical and that was kind of the concern at toledo because they didn't they barely ran any man and they barely had him press and and nfl coaches NFL teams want you to press, even if you're in zone, you know, man or zone. You want to be able to mix it up, mix up your looks. And if you don't know if the guy can pray, he, looking at him, you think he can press. It's a little bit of a mystery, and he's come in, and they don't press an insane amount, so it's not like he's going out there and pressing every time, but when he does, he looks good. But just overall, he is physical. Being physical without interfering at the same time. Physical when the ball is coming his way. But in the only knock, it's not a knock for me, but he was such a playmaker, like jumping routes, making plays, returning interceptions for touchdowns at, at in college at Toledo. Not really doing that right now because he's a lockdown corner, and I prefer, for sure prefer lockdown corners. If you fear that corner, do not throw his way, and you eliminate one side of the field, that is much, much better than getting some interceptions here and there, but then getting beat. So I, I am absolutely blown away, even though we knew he was a good player, by, by Quinion Mitchell, and he's really elevated this Eagles team, and he continues to rise up because going against good receivers, some, other, some, of, some of these other rookies, actually, that were ranked, and then a guy like Terry McLaurin, obviously a veteran, very good one, last week. So he continues to rise. He, Him and Verse were very close to being number one, actually, even though one looked like it was a sure thing for a while, wasn't going to change. It's becoming very, very close these last couple weeks. So we'll see how this ends up finishing. But number one is going to be the Commanders rookie quarterback, Jaden Daniels. And like I said, it's, it's starting to get a little close. I, I mean, team's starting to... Good defense is starting to game plan a little more since the second half of the Steelers game. And then looking at the Eagles game, they're starting to play a little bit better against Daniels. He's a little beat up too. But still, what he's done this year has been phenomenal. I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out a better word here. It's been ridiculous. The Commanders have actually been one of the better NFC teams. We're close to that this year. And it starts with him. A very tough game plan for opposing defenses with his legs, with his arm. But it's more than that. He does things that rookie quarterbacks just don't do. You know, when he, when he is about to get pressured, he knows when to take off, escape. He knows when to get the ball out. Earlier weeks, he was playing solid, but he dropped his eyes when he saw pressure. Even when he didn't see pressure, dropped his, his eyes, and, and then he was looking to take off. And I didn't love that, and they weren't getting a lot out of the receivers. And all of a sudden, something clicked, and, he, and he, something flipped, and he just started playing a lot smarter and just started to trust plays and trust his ability, and that elevated everyone around him, and then, you know, obviously including himself. Uh, but there's been plays where he's been pressured instantly. He knows I got to get the ball out. I got to get it out this time. And, I, and he drops it in the bucket. Some of the deep balls, the underneath balls, everything looks outstanding. So doing things 
really up here, and we, we see the talent with his legs and his arms. We already knew about that. But doing things up here that were that are far, far ahead of schedule, and that's kind of what goes unnoticed. I don't really care about the stats. He's got good stats. If you look at the dual threat part of it or all around, he's got good stats. He's got wins, which is a huge quarterback thing for me at least. But it's just about what he's doing up here as a rookie with a team that's been struggling in the past. And, I mean, outside of McLaurin and – you know they haven't. Do they have a ton? I mean, there's there's guys that are being made better than they're expected to be. I think it starts with him in this offense. So, uh, yeah, last game and a half has been a little tough. Not that he's been bad or anything, uh, but let's see. You know, play the Cowboys this week. We'll see if they can, he can start picking it up again here and then widen that gap once again. Because again, early in the year it was like neighbors, then it was Brian Thomas Jr., then it was Daniels, Daniels, and he's running away with it. Now here comes Mitchell, here comes Verse, here comes Bowers, and. Hey, here comes Bo Nix is really starting to get going too. Uh, and some of those receivers are very capable of being up there. So it's actually becoming more and more of a battle. Last year when we did these, it was Shroud Nakua. Shroud Nakua, and that was really it. We knew it was going to be Shroud at the end of the year, to be honest. But we knew Nakua was deserving. This year, I I like where it's at right now. I love where it's at. There's a We can end the year with anybody at number one. So we'll see where we are at the end of the year. Every week I update it on Twitter, top 10. At the end of the year, we'll regrade, regrade every first round pick because we grade them at the end, uh, right after the draft at the time as well. So some fun things we do there. We have weekly content, weekly pick show, power ranking, score predictions, locks, a lot more. We have updated mock drafts, uh, way, too look, way too early look at free agency, coaching candidates. We got you covered here with all that. So a lot of it's already on the channel and more to come every single week. So join us, like, subscribe to Notifications on. Much appreciated. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.